My name is Andris Nair Magnusson. In last month's edition of The World Today, I wrote a postcard from Reykjavik. In the August-September edition of The World Today, the cold rush, the focus is on the future of the Arctic. Charles Emerson looks at the shift of the Arctic from the half-forgotten periphery of the world affairs to a focus of global interest. We look at the vast wealth of natural resources the Arctic has to offer, generating excitement among energy companies and alarm among environmentalists, plus concerns about the risk of Arctic oil and gas production are rising. Iceland is part of the Arctic. Uh, we can really feel effects of global warming in uh, the rise of sea temperature in the melting of the glaciers in uh, habitat loss of uh, seabirds and uh, the migration of uh, new species of fish like uh, mackerel that uh, has not been common in our oceans before and we can also see how our neighbors in Greenland are seeing uh, opportunities open up as oil exploration, exploitation of minerals, iron interest from uh, China, from uh, South Korea, dealing with the EU and uh, the former colony of Denmark. Lots of these issues are giving the Arctic a great uh, focus. In Iceland there is also a great discussion of the opening of the Northern Hemisphere for uh, international sailing. And all these are becoming bigger political issues. In Iceland we have just started oil exploitation in Greenland also, and the great role model of all this would be Norway, that is kind of the dreamland of the Arctic nations. Everybody wants to be like Norway, wants to be rich, prosperous, and uh, live this end of history life in the shadow of the black gold. Iceland does not seem to be very worried, or at least not in our major media, about oil exploitation or exploration or oil drilling the north shores of Iceland. There has not been great discussion of uh, the risk or the difficulty, only hope or questions of how soon the money will start pouring in. It has not been a, a popular thing to be against oil exploitation. Our friendly neighbors, Norway, they have created a great image of oil for themselves while uh, activists have been able to demonize corporations like Shell, Enron or uh, Texaco or uh, other companies that have created uh, destruction abroad. It seems like the Nor Norwegian oil industry has managed to keep a very shiny and good reputation. So if Norway is taking part then people feel safe. The great uh, resources of the Arctic might seem like easy money for the nations, but nations like Iceland has seen that uh, mega projects in the scale of mining, energy exploitation and oil drilling, all those mega projects can also bring in economic turmoil, short term energy bubbles or economic bubbles that eventually can lead to a crash in the economy. The Icelandic economy crashed because of a mega project in the east where we were supplying Alcoa with 600 megawatts of cheap energy, causing great economic activity for five years, expanding the banking system, giving optimism to everybody, and uh, eventually risk-taking, loan-seeking, and then the crash. The development in Iceland was only about 20% of the GDP, but if you look to Greenland where they have the iron ore mine, where they have uh, possible rare earth resources and where they have also oil, each and every project of that scale is about 200% of the GDP of Greenland. So you can just imagine that if 20% of the GDP was enough to overheat the Icelandic economy. We can imagine what happens in Greenland if they start a project of 200% of the GDP. 
Well, goodbye from Iceland. My name is Andres Nair Magnusson, and you have been listening to The World Today. Thank you.